This video is about finishing what you start. So, this guitar started life. Uh, it was made by John Prendergast, who is a guitar building friend that I never actually knew before he passed away. I helped his widow sell all of his guitars after he passed away. This guitar was just a giant body with a Strat setup. Uh, it was just, I, I didn't know what to do with it. So, Evan Dowie from Rude Guitars, he and I started kind of dreaming up what to do with this guitar. I mean, in 2017, so three years ago, long time ago. So Evan and I decided to build this guitar and then it just got pushed off to the side. We built a bunch of other guitars. He built a bunch of other guitars uh, and it just kind of got pushed off to the side. And then my family, we decided we were moving. So we moved and then I ended up having to fly down. So there's an old video that I'll put up here where I flew back to New Orleans to hang out with family and friends. While I was there, I picked up this uh, body from Evan, and uh, and then I came back and I tried to put it together, and I just didn't have the right tools or the bandwidth or the time or interest to finish it then. So that was like a year ago. So here is the video of how we got up to speed here, and then we're gonna come back at the end, and I'm gonna fix the problems that are still left on this guitar.
screw for the string tree just broke inside the headstock. I wasn't even cranking down on it too hard. I drilled a pilot hole. I was just tightening it up for the last time. And it sheared off. I hate putting guitars together. <laughs> This guitar has almost broken me. Um, and I don't know why I picked like a Monday morning. I think just blind, full blown optimism. I thought I could jump in, grab this guitar and just whip it into shape. When this has been a three year project. As far as proficiency goes in building guitars, I am not a guitar builder. I have assembled a lot of electric guitars, um, but I'm not particularly good at it. I feel like I'm pretty much like maybe a couple ticks above normal, um, but there were many mistakes that were made. Uh, by the time I was done yesterday, oh, I'm not a smasher of things. I'm not a thrower of tools when I get frustrated, but there were so many things that got so annoying yesterday on this guitar. like. The last thing that I did was uh, I had measured out the depth for this string tree and I was going and this headstock, I don't know how it happened. My tape must have walked back up, but I poked through the back of the headstock on the string tree. And that wouldn't be as big of a deal if it wasn't like people watching this video and me kind of showing people the process, but that was annoying and embarrassing. Then, as I was running the screw in, the last couple turns, it was literally the last turn to cinch it uh, all the way against to where it was, the string tree, the spacer, and then the wood, to cinch it all together, the last quarter turn, the screw sheared off. This little poke right there. So, uh, that kills me. <laughs> um, so, oh my gosh, I just, I had to walk away. So the other thing with this is that this guitar, I mean, just all in, my hopes and expectations just are not going to be met. Um, this was a really hard finish for Evan to do. And with that, there's just tons of blemishes and soft spots and little chips and dings. Uh, and then it's just a thick finish. So other issues I kept running into were to get the shanks long enough that the that the pots could come through. And then this five-way switch still isn't quite right. So I can get... Let me zoom you in. So I can get all the way one, two, three, four. I can't get that fifth position. It just clicks. It doesn't quite go all the way. I think there's enough room. I think I can cut that out if I if I clean out this hole a little farther, but I wanna be so careful because this is an epoxy finish and uh, it is not forgiving in the least uh, to scrapes, dings. So anyway, all that to say it officially works. This is officially a guitar. So I shimmed the neck. Actually, I used a guitar pick um, in the neck I used one of the red Jim Dunlops and that got it to where it brought this neck angle down enough that I could get it to sit right. I got the bridge to where I've got a good arch in the bridge. Um, now, there are a couple things I still haven't done. It doesn't have strap buttons, which I chose to not use the strap buttons that I have because they're super brass looking where everything else looks gold. Um, so I don't like that. And then the last thing that I have to do is there's still not a bridge ground, so it's a little noisy. So forgive that, you'll hear that here in a second. I'm really happy with the soldering. So putting guitars together takes a whole skill set that needs to be fresh and used regularly, and I just haven't used this skill set in a long time. So I found myself getting really frustrated because I wasn't doing things to the level that I know that I can and I know that I have. So anyway, it was frustrating, it was annoying, but uh, overall, it is a cool guitar, and the whole point of this guitar was to be ridiculous. The idea of a giant purple sparkle gold hardware clad uh, flame maple neck with abalone dots 
To me, it just seems to make so much sense to just make a big, ridiculous guitar. So, through a thoroughly unintentional um, inspiration, uh, inception, let's call it inception, uh, this pick guard, particularly this curve right here, this just belongs on a cower kind of guitar. Um, and it was not intentional when Evan and I were kind of figuring out ideas for pick guards. I mean, there's only so many different shapes and weird things that you can do, but this particular angle, I'm sure that somewhere along the way that Evan and I texted back and forth and sent a picture of just cool things that we liked and trying to pull inspiration. But there is a fine line between inspiration and uh, imitation. And I think this is just a little too close to imitation. So we're gonna swap it. There are a couple other pick guards over here. The pick guard screws aren't quite the same and the holes aren't quite right. So eventually I'll probably change this pick card. But for now, it is what it is. I want you to hear it. So the goal in this guitar was that I wanted it to be super funky, quacky. Uh, I wanted it to just be as 70s sounding as possible. Uh, so let's see if I achieve that. I'm gonna be playing through my guild. Uh, this is a 5E3 clone. It's a very rad amp that I bought earlier this year. Mm. This guitar, I mean, it almost broke me. Like I really, I'm not someone who lets my temper uh, run away, but yesterday, I mean, this is like the end of a couple year process of finishing this guitar. And a couple things are just glaringly, frustratingly obvious to me now. I don't have the right tools and my skill set is not sharp enough. Like it's not as sharp as I want it to be. Like as I was soldering this guitar, I found myself like, I'm not as good at soldering as I once was. I'm not as good at setting up guitars as I once was. And it's just because I'm not doing it every day. And I had this incredible opportunity, you know, for eight years, my full-time job was working on guitars, selling guitars, talking about guitars. So all of that to say, I've arrived at a place where I like this guitar. It's 90% done. Uh, it still needs a bridge ground. So it's very buzzy. Um, but uh, I don't have a drill bit long enough to go from the cavity with the springs into the main cavity. I'm just gonna wait and do that later. But overall, it's a guitar. It works, it plays, it sounds good. Um, it locks in the thing that I wanted this guitar to do, which was to sound super 70s, sound super funky, and just ridiculous. And uh, I mean, cause that's what, there's something so appealing. Uh, there's something just so appealing about like a giant purple sparkle guitar with gold hardware, with a flame maple neck, with abalone dots, with gold Klusen tuners. I mean, there's something to me that is just so satisfying about 
just a ridiculous fun guitar and that this is just gonna be just a weird guitar that I hang on to for a long time. So it's not 100%. Um, it probably won't be 100% for a long time, but this is where I leave you. The guitar is together. Uh, this is the Razzmatazma Caster. And I feel like I don't have to explain why it's called that, because it's just awesome and ridiculous and over the top. And it's so many of the things I appreciate in the guitar world. So hopefully you glean some wisdom from this uh, and you don't just see me be frustrated and annoyed and come out with a guitar that is not like, this guitar is not the vision I had for it originally. Uh, and that's part of it is that I am just not a pro level guitar builder. Uh, and if I put a bunch of time into it, I know that I could get back to where I once was and I could get better than I even was then. So thanks for watching this video. I have had fun with it. No, I haven't. I haven't had that much fun. Let's be honest. Uh, this has been a painstaking process. It's been a frustrating process. And I've thought many times about not even releasing this video. But I think it's important that you see that life is complicated. I think you know that already. Um, but I think that with this guitar, it just time and time again has been hard and frustrating and annoying. And in the end, I got almost to the guitar that I wanted. So thanks for watching this video. If you want to support the channel, go to jeremythegutarhunter.com slash shop and you can find t-shirts, you can find guitars, you can find all the stuff that I have for sale. Uh, the other easy way to support the channel is to make sure that you like and subscribe this video. Turn the bell on if you're into such a thing. Anyway, I'll see y'all later. Thanks for watching. This is the Razzmatazzma Caster and uh, it's all right. Mm.